On this episode of Modern Greaser, the Cummin Swap C10 receives new upper and lower control arm bushings? Question mark? Question mark? The original equipment for this 1963 C10 are not your normal rubber bushing that isolate the control arm from the chassis. These control arms are solid steel axles that have large metal caps and small rubber grommets that keep grease intact on all the moving portions of the control arm. Stay tuned as we go start to finish on this important and fairly easy front end upgrade. Step 1, remove the wheel and get your truck in the air on jack stands. Make sure your battery is disconnected. So you can use a ball joint separating tool like this where you hit it in with a hammer on this end here and pry this apart. So if you're like me and you have a sleeping 5 month old inside that actually have this tie rod separator right here. And this will actually screw in and separate your tie rod and it also saves your tie rod so that if you want to reuse it, this is the tool you want to use. So there's your tie rod. Obviously the other end was off. It's in really bad shape. I'm going to keep this because we're going to use this to line up the length of our new tie rod before we take it into the alignment shop. Now this side here, we're going to have to use the ball joint fork and we're going to pound right through here underneath the knuckle and try to get this off. Once this ball joint pops, we're going to put the jack underneath this control arm, raise it up, release pressure, pull this nut off, pull that nut off, and we're all set. Now these castle nuts are going to have a cotter pin on them, so you remove the cotter pins on both of them, get these broken loose. This upper one has been broken loose since we had to remove the spring in the past, so let's pop that lower ball joint. Alright, if you can see the castle nut here, the bottom of our spindle here is uptight against that castle nut, so the spring is actually pushing down, so we're going to put a jack underneath this, bring up release tension, take the nut off, take the nut off, and remove the entire spindle. Our lower ball joint nut is off, our upper ball joint nut is off, I'm going to lower the jack down. Be careful with this line here if you're reusing it, we're going to cut this line so we're not going to actually reuse it, so you're going to see me treat it very unfavorably in a second. Here is our wonderful Eaton Detroit Springs. Love this spring, this thing rides so good. So when I lift the upper control arm, you're gonna see one bolt here and another bolt here. That's gonna pull this off and we're gonna replace this whole shaft and the rubber uh, seals for that. And there's shims behind there for the alignment. We're gonna put those shims back in exactly the way they came out before we take it to the alignment shop so it maintains some of the integrity so two bolts, pull that off. Down here, we've got two bolts here, two bolts here on these kind of horseshoe looking things. These are the shims that I'm talking about. Just leave them right where they are. Make sure they don't fall off and mix them up. Keep them right there until you're done. To remove the lower control arm bushings, we're using a 1 and 5 8 inch socket. Fits right over there, put a big breaker our bar on it. Loosen that one, loosen this one, loosen that one. Palm off, and we're good to go. These are all stripped out, and it's loose in there. That's how you know that that one's bad, and on the truck it was flopping around. Your upper control arms are going to be the same as the lower. You're going to loosen this nut, loosen that big nut. They're going to pull off on either side. This is clanking around in there, so there's definitely issues. Pull this off, and you're actually going to replace this entire part here. It's got rubber seals. Put it on there. Put your grease zerks on it. Put grease in it. We'll be good to go. Okay, you can see how this is wore out here. You're gonna get this entire replacement. So anyway, it's in 1963, they really didn't have the same type of bushings that you'd see in a C10 from the 70s. Basically, it's these little metal caps that spin onto the end here, and they kind of get worn out, and there's a little rubber bushing that keeps all of the grease on the inside. So there's a lot of slop in this and they were pretty loose on there. So there's a new one in here and a new one in here. And this one's really big. Now you have to center this one during the install and this one here has an actual rounded out part that goes onto the truck. 
which is gonna be opposite side of your shock mount is where that ring part's gonna go. And you'll see on your truck, there's a little bulge sticking out because that's what's gonna hold onto this as the A-arm flexes up and down. So I'm gonna pull out our new parts. It's way, I think it's easier to install than bushings. This says the problem solver. So this is our new one. What you're gonna do is slide your bushing on, your rubber piece on first. I'm actually gonna throw a little grease on both of these, slide them on there, and then these thread in just like that. So I just added a little wheel bearing grease. Your small side of the bushing goes on first. You really can't mess this one up. All right, once you have your bushings in, you can thread it into the upper control arm. It just goes in like that. How easy. Once this is in place, you're gonna wanna try to center this as much as possible. So these caps just screw on. So you're gonna kinda have to play a little tug of war. Screw this one in, screw that one in. So this is in the center because this needs to move. If you tighten it up on one side, it's not gonna move. So it has to be moving. So wrench it, wrench it, do that. If you don't have a socket big enough, I didn't use any sockets. I just used a couple open end wrenches. So these are gonna work just fine for this one. They're not gonna work just fine for that one. So all I'm gonna do is I'll just take a nice half turn that way, flip it on the other side, take it another half turn that way. Making sure that this is still moving, watching the insides and making sure that that's staying in the middle. And worst case scenario, if it quits moving on you, you can back up one side or the other. All right, so you can see I turned that one a few extra times. It's getting tight, but as long as it's moving, as long as it's centered, you're good to go. All right, so I'm gonna finish this one up. I wanna show you this one now. So this is what you need for the lower control arm, and that is the important part. This part has to go opposite side of your shock mount. And these are the big caps that go in. So you're gonna put your rubber seals on. All right, so once your seals are situated, you can insert it in here. So for this arm, you're not gonna use that. For this arm, you're not gonna use that. You are gonna need a giant one and five eighths inch socket. So I like to go turn that way and a turn that way. And I'm just trying to keep that in the same position. It really doesn't matter. If it's harder to move in your first couple tries, you're not turning these in at the same rate. So they both really need to go at the same rate and keep this floating in the middle. So this should be able to move by hand until the last couple turns, throw it in the truck, do your last turns on it. But it is gonna get really hard really fast. So you're gonna need this and this and this, this. And this. You can still move it. You're good. I couldn't think of a better way to hold this thing down. Even if you're putting all that pressure on here, I'm too light and I can't hold this thing down. You know, whatever. Whatever works for you. I'm sure, this is what all the ESC mechanics do, right? JK. Probably the best part of this whole situation is I'm using a half inch drive with one of those three quarter inch socket adapters. So this is the best setup that I could think of to make this work. So as you go up with it, make sure you're turning this back and kind of doing them at the same time. But I'm gonna play catch up a little with this side over here. Some of you guys might say, hey, you're bending the A-arms. Maybe I am. Maybe it'll bend it even better and make my alignment that much better. Okay, so every time I turn this, I check and I look at the gap on the two sides and make sure that they're the same. So the advantage of having this three quarter by half adapter is I can put on my torque wrench and I can actually torque these down to 100 foot pounds of torque. So that is ideal with these two locked down and the ability to move that back and forth, that's perfect. The other side was much tighter. Don't be afraid if it's too tight. That looks straight to me. This pin right here is what our control arm is gonna align with. This portion on the control arm here is gonna go into that knob that is sticking out of the truck itself. That will hold this in, this solid rod in position as the arm flexes. All right, so these are gonna be the horseshoes that go up around this and tie this back into the truck. It's pretty self-explanatory. 
Yeah, drag that control arm that we just painted on the ground. So this cylinder will actually remain locked in place by the pin that I showed you. These will be nice and tight. And then this, now it's not clanking around like it was before. You can hear the rubber going back and forth. So it obviously needs some grease in there. For the upper control arms, these nuts, once you put them on, they lock on really tight. So make sure you have everything correct. I have the shims that are in here from before in the right place. I have everything the way that I want it. Everything's tight. And I will throw a three quarter inch wrench on there, tighten those down and we'll be all set on the front end here. All right, we're gonna set the coil spring in. I Okay, so our spring is currently under tension. There's two, a pocket and kind of a ring that this sits in, so you gotta make sure that this is set in the right way. And we've got our lower ball joint, which we're gonna set our spindle on. We're gonna put the nut on it, and then we're gonna raise it up to the upper, put the nut on that, and then we're able to uh, get our shock on, release the jack, and go from there. So if you didn't see everything that you're looking for on this last episode of Modern Greaser, I have a few more videos coming out on the full front disc brake conversion. It's got a two and a half inch drop spindle. It's got the master cylinder brake booster, proportioning valve, whole front brake line setup. We've got an electric canister, vacuum pump. I've got tie rod ends. I've got the front upper and lower ball joints. So the next few videos, I'm gonna show you how to do a front disc brake conversion, start to finish, and how to rebuild most, if not all of your front end. Be sure to stay tuned because I've got a Mallet Supercharged ZR2 Chevy Colorado four wheel drive and this thing is wicked fast. So we get a chance to go out and take a look at that truck. I also added a whole bunch of merchandise to the Teespring store. So you can find it on the website at moderngreaser.com or you can click on it at Teespring and just search Modern Greaser. Uh, it's all over the place. You can find that. You can find that on Instagram, modern.greaser. It's all over the place, or on Facebook, or wherever you want to find it. Uh, but check it out, I added some funky stuff on there. I like to mess around and make things, and so I'm making stuff just because it's a fun hobby to do. So I make zero profit on any of the shirts. I just put them up there for fun. Thank you once again for tuning in to another episode of Modern Greaser. Make sure you hit that like button if you like this video. Make sure you hit that like button if you hated this video. And make sure you subscribe to the channel. All I have to say is keep it greasy, my friends.